youth group will be meeting tonight um, at 5.30 at the Oakland Church of God. So we're going to have our snow camp meeting uh, quick at 5.30, and then we're going to join with Oakland uh, for a uh, joint youth session tonight. Um, so parents, you should be coming to the meeting, bring your kids to the meeting, and you can leave after that. And uh, Corey and Mel and I will find a way to get all of your kids back here somehow. Uh, so uh, uh, bring them out to the meeting, come, and we'll, have, uh, we'll bring them back afterwards. Uh, also, our prayer meeting is tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock at the church. Uh, also today, after the, the morning worship service, we will be having some pizza and ice cream and cake uh, in honor of Zymir and Tinker. Uh, this is their last Sunday here. Uh, they'll be going on to their, their uh, anybody who would like to go. Uh, and don't let uh, cost uh, defer, deter you because we do have some scholarships available um, for those wanting to go that can't afford to go. So um, please uh, please come to the meeting tonight or see me today after service uh, for the information. Um, there will be a guest speaker here from the Gideons next Sunday to share uh, during the morning. There will be a benefit auction and dinner for Leatherwood Academy. It's a new building on Saturday, March 11th. Tickets are $10.00. Uh, Heather has limited tickets this morning. Sue has some tickets uh, available this morning. Uh, so see either Heather or Sue um, for your tickets if you don't have them. Uh, uh, also, uh, this Wednesday night at the church, uh, we will be uh, holding a game night. Uh, so if you're to come and bring a, a board game and uh, or a, a video game of some type that the groups can play, and, and we'll uh, get together and have some snacks and uh, just to enjoy. Wednesday night at the church at 6 p.m. Uh, also, the fellowship team will meet briefly today following the morning worship service, uh, and the regular congregational meeting will be held March 5th following the morning worship service. Uh, annual booklets are available in the back, so make sure you pick those up. Uh, they and Lord, we come into your presence now expecting you to move into work, and so Lord, we just lay aside any distractions. Uh, any thoughts that, that lead us away from uh, just uh, experiencing your presence. And Lord, just help us to enter into this time of worship with the expectant hearts. And uh, Lord, we just thank you to do here today. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now stand and greet someone around you before a time of worship this morning. Good morning.
two state titles. My personal position was cornerback. My job and responsibility was to stop a wide receiver from catching the ball. After years of trying other positions in the field, I found this one to be natural. It came easy to me in a sense. I felt at home. But I gotta be honest with you. There was always one position on the field that I envied the most. If I had it my way, I would have played this position instead. The position I envied the most was quarterback. My boys, and they chanted my name. Marky, Marky. That's what I wanted. But that's not how it worked out. Because we had a guy who was really good at that position. His name was Mike, and he was a beast at quarterback. No one read the field and threw the ball like Mike. In fact, Mike was gifted for that position. And although it came with less notoriety, I was gifted to play my position as a cornerback. You see, our whole team was full of people who played their specific position. And that position came with a set of specific responsibilities that required guys with a specific skill set. And here's why I mention that, and, and you, you see it coming. The same is true amongst believers in the church. But instead of illustrating the success and health of the whole body, one part is greater than the next. No matter how much notoriety it may get, Paul says it this way. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment. Each of Paul says, we don't all have the same function. We have many members. We are one body. As believers, I think we often get too caught up in other people's gifting and what we'd rather be good at, instead of focusing on what God has gifted us with and how we all work to use those different gifts to bring Him. You see, for me, the quicker I came to the realization that I'll never be as good as Mike at quarterback, I started to excel at what I was gifted in. And when I played my part and the other members of the team played theirs, it led to success. Today, So we are continuing today uh, talking about the body, about how as the, the body members we all belong one to another. And so we need to be doing our part because we all belong to one another. And so uh, let's stand and worship with that in, in mind this morning. And, and uh, let's
for all the Valentines and all the celebrations that we have. The birthdays, Lord, we just thank you for successful surgeries and recoveries, and just pray that you would continue to be with those that are recovering and those that are facing surgeries and procedures. And Lord, we just thank you for the blessing of pregnancy and new life. And Father, we just pray your blessing over Mel and Corey, the Father that prayer and worship that you brought together. That Father, you are just doing the work here in this congregation. And we just thank you that you're knitting us together, Lord, and the different things that we do together in fellowship and worship, that in learning together, that, Lord, you're knitting us together and you're making us one body, one church, one purpose. And, Father, we thank you for just watching over Luke in his plane situation, and we thank you for all that you We lift up Mel's cousin and just pray your blessing upon her with her upcoming bar exam. We lift up Linda and pray that you would just watch over her, bring healing, Lord, and pure rest to her. Father, we thank you um, for watching over Kayla's grandmother as she starts her treatment. We also pray your blessing and your peace of Lord God for bringing us all here, Lord, and for the many blessings that you're doing and that you continue to do. In Jesus' name. Alright, children are dismissed for children's church at this time. So that, that right there, that's the line to get in. That was like yesterday or the day before. That's the line to get in. God is moving there and drawing people.
And when asked about their experience there at the revival, one student made this proclamation. Jesus sense of unity. Like we're coming together. We're praying for each other. We're worshiping together. We're reconciling. We're serving each other like I've never seen before. Do you know what that sounds like? And, 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 and through this whole situation in which their denomination is splitting, some people have taken this side and some people have taken this side and they've been, felt fractured. But God came through and unified the body of Christ there. And now the whole world is hearing about it and it's spreading around to college campuses all around the United States. Because they found out we are one body under Christ. You know, as we can. And it says this For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith that God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body, others do not have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all of the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. Do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another, lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in, in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need, and practice hospitality. In church, each member of the body belongs to to all of the others. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, we preached about how Jesus Christ is to be at the head of the church, and we have that scripture in 1 Corinthians up there. So we, we read this scripture. It says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? Therefore, honor God with your body. And we all agree that because Jesus Christ is our head and because of what he did to did for us, we do not belong to ourselves. We don't get to make the, the decisions over us. Jesus Christ died for us. And when we accept that death and yourself, you belong to all of the others. That's what he says. In the scripture. And I want to take a look at what that might look like in our lives as, as we uncover this scripture. But before we, we go any further, let's ask the Lord to, to bless our time this morning together. Mason, could you open us with a word of prayer? Father God, we thank you that it is a privilege to come underneath your stewardship, underneath your word, underneath the head, which is Jesus Christ. And I just pray that you're. Spirit, because we're all many members, and we dedicate this time for you to have your way with each of us in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, I want to use this stress, acting like we belong to one another, is that we will love sincerely. It's in verse 9. We will love sincerely. So ha have you ever caught yourself saying to one of your children, um, I love you, I just don't like you very much at the moment. Have, have, you, have you ever found yourself saying that to any of them? Yes. We find ourselves saying that at times because we give our children more rope usually than we give the rest of the people in our lives. Because despite them making the same mistake for the 18th time, we're still going to love them, right? And despite them rolling their eyes back into their head for the we're told in verse 9 of our scripture that our love for each other must be sincere. It has to be sincere. And this sincerity refers to the fact 
that we are to have an unwavering agape love for each other, and that this love has to come without hypocrisy. Meaning that when we say, I love you, we have to prove it. How do we prove our love to those who are in the church? We back it up with our actions. Our actions and our words will come into agreement. So when we're saying, hey, this whole thing, put your love in action, I think was the name of the, of the, of the service. And so the first sign that you've humbled yourself to the point where you now view yourself as belonging to your brothers and sisters here at church is that you will show a sincere love to the people that are in the pews here. Your words and your actions will come together and they will agree with one another. And there will be times where you'll look at someone and say, Oh, I don't like you very much right now. But my love for you is still going to continue through that. Just like we do with our children and our family members because this is the family of God. So we must love sincerely and to what is good. So what happens when you hear the word cancer? Death. Death? Uh, when, when I think of cancer, I think of, of an invader. It's something that's, that's not welcome in the body. And the body tries to fight it off, but it can't. And, and I think of, of my own dad. Like, he died in his, in his mid-40s from cancer. And, and how much that, that robbed us of our time together. And, and I think about how it just, it comes into a body and just completely, completely destroys everything about that body until there's nothing left. Cancer to our body. And then when we have sin in our lives and it begins to rot us away, when we come and connect to the body of Christ, it's like we're a cancer to this body. So we have to make sure we get rid of this sin. And we confess it to God, and, and sometimes we confess it to one another so that we don't have to deal with the effects of it being in our body and being in the body of Christ. How do we know? How do we do this? Verse 9 gives us clear instructions. It says, hate what is evil, but so people you don't like. No. Nope. Nope. Not at all. I can just keep going on and going on and going on. And if I don't see them, even greater. You know, right? Amen. Do we really do that with sin? Or do we let it linger more and holy and be careful about what we let into our bodies? So we, we get rid of the evil. We hate the sin and we cling to what is good. The third evidence I see that in a church body that, that, that belongs to each other is that, that they will honor one another. They will honor one another. I, I love watching a good parade. Uh, we, we went up to Brock. You, you look at the parade. Just riding around at the, at the tail end of the parade. and oh, They're just so happy. To see all the smiles on everybody's faces. To see how, how much everyone enjoyed the parade that just happened. And the fruits of their labor unfold. Uh, and, and the smiles and faces of everyone who enjoyed that day. And everybody in praise. Point it out. And praise them for it. We need to be about giving honor where honor is due. And it, it's about getting rid of the pride in us. Because the pride is the thing that stops us from doing Humbling ourselves. Humbling ourselves. And lifting up our brothers and sisters. Make church more about them than it is about us. So get rid of the pride and increase the honor that we pay to God. We use each other and belongs to each other will have their spiritual fervor set on the Lord. They will have their fervor on the Lord. You know, we've heard this phrase over and over again throughout our life, that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Yeah? We, we agree with that. But it's true in the church, too. 
We make sure we spend quiet times with the Lord. We make sure we have prayer times before we get here. We make sure we're in the Word of God. And when we don't do these things, our spiritual fervor and zeal for the Lord is in danger of diminishing. And when we let it get there, we're not letting just ourselves down. The whole body suffers when we don't take care of our spiritual fervor. So we need to make sure that our hearts and our lives are turned to the Lord constantly to our brothers and our sisters. By spending that time spending that time in the Word. When we get on our knees in prayer, even though the last thing we want to do is get on our knees and pray. And we ask our brothers and sisters, hey, how'd your time with the Lord go this week? Making sure our spiritual fervor is on the Lord. Here's a place for you to start. Start praying for your brothers and sisters here at church. It's a good place to start because it, when you belong to the body here, a first step that you can take is to humble yourself and just go up to the side this week. What, what is there in your life that you need prayer for this week? Verse 12 tells us to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. And so we need to do our part in praying for the people who are here. And so part of the, of, of the slightest idea of my family's problems are, unless I go up to her and say, sure, really, what's been going on this week? Can I, can I pray for you in some way? And she's not going to be offended, are you? I hope not. She's going to really know that I have a genuine concern for her, and she's probably going to share with me some things that I can pray about for her. And so we build faith for other members of the body. Belonging evidence number six is that you share with one another. You share with one another. When, when you have a toddler at home, usually the first word out of their mouth is no. Okay? But usually about the third or fourth, maybe even the we don't have the right to say mine anymore. Because Jesus Christ is head, and then comes the body of believers, and then we're third in the pecking order. And so we need to use what we've been given and share it with the brothers and sisters who are in our church. So everything that we have should be put into the hands of God. After all, God blessed you with the time, talents, and resources to gain what you have, and so you need to lay those things down at your feet. Whatever you have, you're to share it with those around you. Whatever you have, the people in the pews, it's as much, they have as much of a right to it as you do. I, I told this story. When I, when I bought my new truck, I said, Lord, I'm, this, this is going to be for your glory. This, I absolutely know that's going to happen. And I did not want to share. Yes, I will come and pick you up. I tried to get my wife's vehicle and she told me no, no one said no. even 
fill up my truck bed with God and a couple a couple things. Like why do we hold so tightly to our stuff? People who are willing to share what we have with one another. And that leads to number seven. We need to practice hospitality where we share even our homes, even our most precious possession with those who this is just the building where church happens. So church can happen in our homes when two or three are gathered together. And so we need to have our doors open. We're told that we need to be hospitable to one another. That means we extend church from this building and we take it to our homes with us and <laughs> Mikasa su casa. There you go. The, ask the, the, the Spanish woman about the, not the proper pronunciation. <laughs> but we use our home and our ability to minister to we belong to one another. So this takes the idea of sharing and all we've talked about to the next level. When we use even our most valuable possession in any law book anywhere. Good luck trying to prove that. But we, we claim ownership over so much. But when we give ourselves to God, when we become a Christian, we don't even own ourselves. We don't even own ourselves. Instead, we need to belong to one another. Period. It'll just be here. Because the Holy Spirit will pour it out as he sees us come into alignment under Jesus Christ the head. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we just come to you and Lord, we are just asking you to, to speak to us. Lord, there are, we listed many, many things, many evidences of, of what our lives should look like when we truly live by the fact that we do belong to each other here at the church. There's an area in which we're lacking in. Lord, would you bring it to our attention? If we need to love each other sincerely, if we need to, to put off evil and cling to what is good, if we need to be devoted to, to honoring each other and putting away our pride, if we belong one to another, Lord, bring us together as your family underneath Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We're going to stand and sing a, a final closing song and uh, um, just ask the Lord to, and the Holy Spirit to continue to minister to you and how you. I can see.
and cake and ice cream as we uh, uh, come together as a body to uh, just uh, send off these young